Jennifer McCready. How are you doing today, Jennifer? I'm doing well. Thank you, Dr. Lang. Listen, I'm doing great myself. Having you on this show again is just awesome because I know you're going to tell some great stories about parents and connecting with parents. So I'm just, I just can't wait to hear them. So what's your first story today, Jennifer? Well, I'm the counselor and uh, restorative practices coordinator at the DAP in my district and uh, the Early, Ex Early Excellence uh, Pre-K Center. And so uh, I have experiences from both of those campuses to share with you today. Wow, you have two ends of the stick, the top and the bottom. That yes. should be interesting. That should keep you going pretty good. This should make you use a lot of skills really quick, really fast. All right, let's see what you got for me today, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I'll start uh, by talking about the DAEP. We've been uh, using restorative practices since 2018. And um, one of my favorite students of a student taking initiative with restorative practices is when she told me um, that her family was having issues communicating and she circled up her brother and dad, employed the talking piece and talked about the issue and came up with solutions uh, and really felt better about how the family was communicating and said it was uh, a wonderful thing going forward. Dad and brother agreed. Wow, did dad and brother actually resolve anything? Did they feel like you know they could bring closure to some things? Are they still using it, do you know? Well, it's been several years, but she was happy the rest of her placement uh, with how they were, were now communicating as a family. Um, sometimes when kids get older, parents may be back away, and this was just a reminder for dad that his students still needed him, and they all needed to communicate. Wow, that is awesome. And for her to bring the skills that she learned from school to the home and it still worked, that, that speaks volumes about restorative practices. They say it's transformational. It and is. It's cultural. And it's age, no age limit. I, I just, this is a proof right here. This is proof in the pudding. Okay, and so do you have another story for me? Sure. Um, another uh, thing we do at the DAP is we do transition circles with the home campuses where we talk about the student who's returning to their home campus's strengths, the challenges they may face going back, and then their goals. And at the end of one of those transition circles last year, a junior high mom said, thank you for giving my son back to me. Wow, that should have brought chills to you. I mean, okay. did anybody doubt that restorative practices work? Just listening to that, that should change their thought at least somewhat to say, well, let me see what it really is. Let me investigate for myself. It can't be just good for one person. I mean, that is powerful. For a parent to say that, that is pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share? Over at the um, pre-K center, I recently met with parents in November and we circled up. We got to know each other and then we all shared what we hoped uh, the child would experience during the school year. And so the families got to connect with one another. They got to see that they're not the only uh, family with a student that might have a, a developmental need. Um, and so they saw how much they enjoyed it. And then I provided questions for them to take home so that they could circle it up at home. More specific questions then. How was your school day? Yeah, um, uh -huh. because how was your school day doesn't get anything done. They don't even answer those questions. Give me right. a couple of a couple of the questions you ask. Um, did you help anyone today at school? If so, who and and how did you help them? Wow, so that's a good student, one. Yeah. Um, did you? How do you participate in your class? And they can talk about that as well. That's beautiful, and I think that these questions are non intrusive. You're trying to get at the conversation between the parent and the student to try to open a conversation starter. And sometimes parents need just a little jump starter, a little boost in that area because that's not something they're gonna naturally know how to do. They might ask how you did at school today, but to get at the real core of what exactly did you do, what exactly happened, that, that paints a different picture. Correct. And then I just have a statement from a parent that I think sums up so well the power of restorative practices. Would you like me to read that? Of course. Okay. She said, thank you for making the choice to build up your students, for pouring into them, for encouraging and believing in them. Our son was very anxious about his time at the DAEP, but that only lasted a couple of days. He often talks about his conversations with each of you and circle time. Don't believe what you are doing each day isn't important and life-changing, because it is. Thank you for treating our child as one of your own. Your efforts are touching lives and families. 
our appreciation is immeasurable. Oh my God. I would frame that, make copies of that. All right. I would frame it and put it all over my office in the hallway, wherever I could. I mean, if a parent says that about her child, that's been working with you under restorative practices, building relationships, learning how to self-correct, self-discipline, that's powerful. I mean, restorative practices is such a tool. It's just awesome. I mean, when we say it's transformation, cross-cultural, it has no age limit. It's just a great tool to build relationships overall. And all these parent testimonies and these examples you've given is truly an example of how it really works. So if they doubt it, they can hear it from parents' voices. It really does work. Is there anything else you want to leave with the, the uh, people who are watching this? Any thoughts, any ideas, any suggestions? How did you jumpstart those those parent meetings with them? Um, is there any special thing you did? Did you reach out to them? Did you call them? I know you're already in the environment, so you're tasked with doing it. Is there any techniques or strategies or opportunities that you presented to the parents? Um, I, I hope to continue with my pre-K parents in the spring. I've, I've actually just planned two more meetings. And I think for one, uh, we'll be talking more about I statements and uh, we'll be talking more about respect agreements that they can do at home. But I think it's just opening the door for them to see the possibilities. Um, and pre-K students are just so wonderful because they're enthusiastic about anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And so this is a wonderful time to introduce all of these things, not just at school, but at home. Yeah. And I think that when they're young like that, if you can teach them some skills when they're very young, hopefully they'll carry them on through the other uh, ages, through high school, through middle school, and those skills that will just keep building year after year after year. And their home life becomes different because parents begin to see that these things are important and they learn another language on how to speak to their students or their children without feeling like they don't know what to say. So I think you've te you're teaching the parents and the students some great skills that should carry them on for a very long time, Jennifer. I'm really okay. proud of you, so proud of you. <laughs> they all find their voice and they all start advocating for themselves, their families, um, and their schools. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for coming on today. I appreciate you so much and have a great day, what's left of it, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And keep doing the good work with the parents. Love it, love yeah. it, love it.